नमस्कार दोस्तों उम्मीद है आप सब अच्छे होंगे आज है सेवेंथ ऑफ अप्रैल दोस्तों और दिन क्या है दिन है आज थर्सडे यानी कि बृहस्पतिवार सो so, आज की चर्चा शुरू करते हैं मैं सिद्धार्थ आपका मेंटोर स्वागत करता हूं आप सभी का सिविल्स डेली के इस यूट्यूब क्लासेस में जहां आज हम बात करेंगे यूपीएससी 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 प्रिलिम्स और मेन्स से रिलेटेड इंपॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट्स इंपॉर्टेंट न्यूज को ठीक है ये है हमारी आज की न्यूज मैंने ज्यादा कुछ कवर नहीं किया है सीबीआई से रिलेटेड एक मुद्दा आज हम जानेंगे क्या है और जो मैंने हाईलाइट किया है बेसिकली ये दोनों पार्ट ठीक है ये आप देख रहे हो ये और ये वाला पार्ट ओके नेक्स्ट यार ये इंडिया नेपाल रिलेशनशिप में मुझे बहुत अच्छा मसाला दिखा नहीं अपने प्रिलिम्स और मेन्स के लिए ठीक है बेसिक इंफॉर्मेशन आप जानते हो दैट इज वाई एम नॉट कवरिंग इट दूसरा था एक सेकेंड युवापा युवापा के बारे में कुछ नई डेवलपमेंट है नहीं जो है वो पुरानी आपको पता है ठीक है अगर ये हटाई जाएगी जिस दिन उस दिन नया एक सेगमेंट आएगा बट अभी सिचुएशन इज सेम ओके द जो भी हमारे लॉज हैं आईपीसी के सेक्शन है जो भी गवर्नमेंट ने पिछले साल किया है दैट इज स्टैटिक पोर्शन तो हमने कवर नहीं किया है जो इंपॉर्टेंट था जो बहुत दिनों से न्यूज में नहीं आ रहा था वो आज आया है सो दिस इज वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू कवर यर चलिए नेक्स्ट आज शाम पांच बजे ठीक है आई थिंक जब तक ये वीडियो रिलीज होगा तब तक ऑलरेडी मैम ने ले चुकी होंगी ये लेकिन हाँ वीडियो पोस्ट uh, है हमारे यूट्यूब पे आप प्लीज उसको देखिएगा आप उसको वॉच करिएगा दिस इज द कंप्लीट बुक लिस्ट एंड रिसोर्सेज फॉर यूपीएससी आई एस ट्वेंटी सब्जेक्ट वाइज है ये ओके okay? ये सब्जेक्ट वाइज है बहुत डिटेल एनालिसिस है प्लीज आप देख लीजिएगा उसको नेक्स्ट ये हमारे जो कम्युनिटी बॉक्स है आपके आंसर्स में कम्युनिटी बॉक्स में बच्चों ने आंसर्स अपने पोस्ट किए हुए हैं हशमीत ने तनु ने प्रांजल ने ऑलरेडी एंड हशमीत तनु प्रांजल आपके आंसर्स इवैल्यूएट हो जाएंगे रवि सर हैं वहां पे ठीक है वर्षा मैम वहां पे हैं एंड देयर विल बी सेवरल अदर सिविल जेरी के जो मेंटर्स हैं वो आपके आंसर्स इवैल्यूएट करेंगे विद इन ट्वेंटी टू फोर्टी आवर्स का टाइम आप दे दीजिए ओके ऑल्सो आई एम गोइंग टू मेक यर एन अनाउंसमेंट आई हैव डिस्कस टूमोरो एज वेल दैट ये जो चीज है ऑल इंडिया टेस्ट होगा आई एस प्रिलिम्स ओपन टेस्ट 10 अप्रैल को सो आई वुड सिंसियरली रिक्वेस्ट एवरीबडी टू प्लीज 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 जो भी दे रहे हैं यूपीएससी 2022 का एग्जाम वो इसको जरूर दें ठीक है तैयारी कैसी है क्या शॉर्टकमिंग्स है सो so, थोड़ा सा एक आइडिया मिल जाता है राइट right? लिंक डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स में डाल दूंगा आपको Um, ये है वन टू वन मेंटरशिप जहां पे आप लोग मुझसे क्वेश्चन करते रहते हैं कि सर क्या कब कैसे कैसे पढ़ें सो दिस इज हियर द लिंक हैज बीन गिवन इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट यू टू काइंडली फिल द फॉर्म एंड यू वेट फॉर सम टाइम यू विल गेट अ कॉल और वहां पे आपको वन टू वन मेंटरशिप की डिटेल में आपको बताएंगे और जो भी आपकी क्वरी है वी विल रिजॉल्व देन एंड देयर ठीक है हाँ थोड़ा सा ट्वेंटी टू फोर्टी आवर्स का इसमें भी टाइम लगता है और right, दोस्तों नेक्स्ट अप हमारे जो यूट्यूब पे यूट्यूब की जो प्लेलिस्ट है वहां पे कई सारे वीडियोस नए नए अपलोड हो रहे हैं आई वुड सिंसियरली से आप प्लीज इसको बेल आइकन को दबाए रखिएगा ठीक है पर्सनलाइज कर दीजिएगा सो दैट यू गेट डेली अपडेट्स ऑन दीज टॉपिक्स ओके सो लेट अस बिगिन आर टूडेज एडिटोरियल सो लेट बी टेक यू हिया सो टूडे वी टॉक अबाउट द कैंडिड कॉन्वर्सेशन अबाउट द केज पैरट ठीक है इट स्पीक्स लाइक ही विल शेयर सम इन साइटफुल इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट द सीबीआई एंड द रोल द अपॉइंटमेंट एंड द चैलेंजेस एंड द सजेशन ओके सो वाई दिस वॉज इन न्यूज आई टेल यू so one second so this was in news because chief justice our chief justice of india shri n v ramana recently he went to um a 19th edition of uh, uh, ceremony where he was delivering a speech he was into a dp kohli memorial speech who was dp kohli by the way dp kohli uh meanwhile if you have a um, pen and paper ready you can note down or else if you know then pause this video and you can comment here okay who was dp kohli so our chief justice he was last week in one of those ceremonies and uh, where the talk show uh, was organized by uh, central bureau investigation wherein um nv ramana 
he discussed about the challenges the um, um, currently so suggestions going through in central bureau of investigation and what was that that is the main point we are going to discuss so dp kohli for that matter i'm going to share that dp kohli was the first it's very important here to know that dp kohli was the first director general of cbi after the agency was renamed the cbi in 1963 from the earlier pehle naam kya tha iska pehle naam tha delhi special police establishment dpsc okay 1963 the name got renamed and uh, dp kohli was the first cbi director okay he was a man of impeccable character he was faceless fearless and lots of people who are in cbi he looked up to him he wanted to become like him okay so why cbi why i have taken this okay because that's a very very important institution of our um, of of india and simultaneously it has been associated with supreme court as well so it becomes important for our prelims plus mains preparation so we will discuss what is cbi we will discuss the historical background of cbi we will discuss the case handled director challenges suggestions okay so pull out your pen and paper notepad in case you need it please write else you can download this pdf from our community box habitat ke box pe aapko mil jayega and you can easily download these files okay meanwhile stay tuned here so what is cbi cbi is an investigating agency it's a premier investigating police agency in india okay you can see here these are the jackets and these are the normal police um, personals all right this that's the logo so what's the function to so, cbi functions under the superintendence of department of personal ministry of personal so keep this in mind these three these three points are very very essential for from prelims point of view why because it is related to what is cbi so cbi comes under the department of personal and ministry of uh, ministry of personal and public uh, pension and public grievances okay which falls under the government of india under the prime minister's office right second however investigations of offenses under the prevention of corruption act it comes under central vigilance commission it does not directly falls under cbi so you can make a note here that prevention of corruption act comes under the superintendence of cbc not the cbi okay it is also the nodal police agency in india which coordinates itself on behalf of interpol member countries so you can make a note out of it if anybody from the interpol organization wanted to connect with india then that agency that body should be the cbi who would help interpol in in uh, Uh, solving the cases and all so the conviction rate uh, it has been said that 65 to 70 percent cbi has a successful conviction rate which is one of the biggest and greatest numbers of all the agencies in the world and that's commendable that's phenomenal but the question remains the same that why still there has been so many challenges why still there has been so many um blames on cbi why we refer cbi as caged parrot let us understand about the historical facts historical facts how did cbi come into force right so this happened during the world war second so during the world war second a special police establishment was constituted in 1941 under the department of the british india and why it was established because to inquire about all the corruptions all the bribery charges anybody okay corruption has no religion see corruption has no caste no community anybody can do corruption okay it's just an unethical step anybody can 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 get involved into it theek okay? hai so this was the uh, single most body that was created during world war second and that was primarily uh, kept to um, actually investigate highlight and uh, whom cases referring to bribery and corruption related to procurement procurements of what procurements of essential commodities procurement of weapons okay so after that once the india got independent okay after 1947 the same body the same body here spe 
स्पेशल पुलिस एस्टैब्लिशमेंट डी को प्रीफिक्स कर दिया गया था दैट बिकम्स डी एस पी ई ओके दैट्स डेली स्पेशल पुलिस एस्टैब्लिशमेंट सो लेटर ऑन इट वॉज फॉर्मलाइज एज एन एजेंसी ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया टू इन्वेस्टिगेट इन टू एलिगेशन ऑफ करप्शन इन टू वेरियस विंग्स ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट ओके एंड दिस वॉज द एक्ट इन एक्टेड ड्यूरिंग नाइनटीन फोर्टी सिक्स दैट्स वाई इट केम इन टू फोर्सेज नाउ सी बी आई डिराइव द पावर टू इन्वेस्टिगेट फ्रॉम डेली स्पेशल पुलिस एस्टैब्लिशमेंट एक्ट सो दिस वॉज द एक्ट यू गाइज कैन रिमेंबर दैट दिस वॉज द एक्ट दिस इज द एक्ट थ्रू विच सी बी आई um has got that immunity has got that special power to investigate in certain domain certain dimension now in the chronological order it comes during 1963 so what happens in 1963 that the cbi was established by the government of india with a view to investigate serious crimes now with this the name cbi has been adopted uh, the name the nomenclature has been changed from dspe and this was the first time when this gentleman who was he dp kohli was appointed was the first director of cbi okay and that time cbi was handled couple of domains to investigate and those areas would be like defense uh, crime related defense corruption in places serious frauds cheating embezzlement social crimes so on and so forth right so with the passage of time cbi has simultaneously started investigating into conventional crime kya hote hain conventional crime jaise you know something assassinations kidnapping hijacking you remember uh, rajiv gandhi uh, assassination indira gandhi's assassination cbi was involved into it right hijacking crimes extremism for example something has happened with reference to uapa or something has happened with some some sedition cases in involved and high profile case then cbi would intervene here the second here the third step is cases handled by the cbi so what is it about few cases like anti corruption crimes okay so these are few specification i would not go into detail here you can make a note out of it because that's very objective okay for example prevention of corruption act against public officials public sectors corporate bodies so on so forth and then they have got next segment in economic crimes what would that be uh, currency notes bank frauds cyber crimes everything is related to economy now special crimes what are special crimes for investigation on serious organized crime you know mafia types gunda types you know something on 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 very Uh, economic and social level that that uh, it, that involves a lot of lot, all the stakeholders many stakeholders they involved here laws requests of state government or the order of the supreme court okay these special crimes are those crimes which needs a special permission from the state government or the supreme court or maybe the uh, central government right now last here is very very important here suo moto cases what does suo moto means see suo moto means that um a proceeding a something which has been taken into consideration from by courts either high court or supreme court without without discussing to anybody any of the legislative executive bodies okay so this is totally reference to supreme court has it's like um extraordinary extra constitutional power here so basically what happens here cbi because public uh, police and health basically police falls police is a state subject is into concurrent list right so police since police being into concurrent list definitely then state all the state governments they will have their control on cbi right let's say in uttar pradesh let's say in uh, hathras that hathras kand had happened right hathras issue so let's say in hathras nearby meerut something has happened now cbi everybody is asking about like cbi should probe into cbi should investigate but cbi can only investigate when the chief minister when the state government of up allows cbi to intervene to investigate okay if state should state government deny the investigation of cbi then cbi cannot go then there is one door and the last door will be supreme court then the person or maybe the uh, victim he can or she can approach or they can approach to supreme court or higher courts 
and the court can order CBI investigation any crime in anywhere in the country without the consent of the state. That's the difference. That's the power of Suomoto cases, right? Hope you will understand in case you don't, I mean, did, did not understand. And so I would request you comment here and then we'll discuss in detail. We'll take some examples, real life examples so that you can understand properly. Now, director of CBI, who is the director? CBI as Inspector General of Police, IG. Okay, he should be, there are very various credentials, various qualities they are attached to it. Okay, so an IG of police could be, I mean, could become the director of CBI and that would be from where? Delhi Special Police Establishment Act. Remember, I told you that this act gives CBI the immunity, the power, the authority, the control to run the investigation. So through this act, the Inspector General of Police can become the director of CBI. Now, with that saying, till 2014, the CBI director was appointed on the basis of DSPE Act. However, let's go back here. In 2003, DSPE Act was revised on Supreme Court's recommendation in Vineet Narayan case. And what was that? That a committee that had members from CVC, secretaries, Home Minister, personal, they, I mean, these people will be uh, part of appointment of CBI director. Okay, it's a big, big, huge responsibility, huge position. That is why so many stakeholders are involved to appoint a CBI director. Now, what happened in 2014? That Lokpal, everybody knows about that Lokpal came and Lokpal wanted CBI to be an independent, a different body, a different, a detached from the government okay so lokpal has already discussed that i mean already mentioned here the cbi should have like it it, it it should be headed by prime minister other members leader of opposition and they are so forth okay so you can read about this this has already i have mentioned here so lokpal has some different uh, set of uh, um, uh, procedure to appoint a cbi now challenges that's the most important. Here it lies your mains preparation. So what are the challenges basically? What did NV Ramana Sahab, what did he talk about in this meeting? See, he did not talk about something new. We all know about it. But yes, he did talk about something very, very important aspects. For example, um, let me highlight to you. See, the, C the uh, Chief Justice of India, he called upon the investigators to stand up to unethical pressures in order to not to betray the trust. Whose trust? Trust by the public. Public, we, we common citizens, we Indians, we have got um, a, a trust factor in, 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 in investigation agencies that of course, wo, wo, no, wo nyay dilwaega, that he, 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 he'll bring justice, okay, an unbiased approach. So, he dropped a hint that if middle and senior level investigator deviated from the path of objectivity and neutrality, they would pay it for dearly and clearly. See, right? So there are a few things that he already mentioned. So we'll talk about something not very new, but very common. What is this? Excessive political interference. It has been said, and this is why this has been called CBI as a caged parrot, just because it has excessive political interference. We can see here in a couple of cases, like in, in mm, 1990s, Justice J.S. Verma. Okay, Justice J.S. Verma was this, is the same judge. I think he, he gave judgment on uh, um, Nirbhaya case, Nirbhaya case, where um, I think... Uh, um, some investigation agency and team was formed. Okay, I think that I have already talked in my previous uh, lecture um, about uh, marital rape. Okay, so Justice J.S. Verma is, is um, has got tremendous uh, quality of interpreting things, interpreting our constitution, and he has given phenomenal judgments. He has given um, uh, committee's recommendation to our government. Okay, so enormous delays in concluding investigation. For example, the inertia in its probe against high dignitaries like Jain Hawala diary case in 1990. Third, loss of credibility. So, improving the image of the agency is one of the biggest challenge. 
okay and of course image cannot be improved in one night or one day right it takes time so in case in 1990 there has been so many um, um, questions on cbi being subordinate of all the executives so this meant that the cbi has caught political interference and it is a caged parrot there has been several cases wherein we can um, have a quick look for example the biggest challenge till now as the agency has been criticized for its management of several cases involving prominent politicians in mishandling for example Beaufort scandal during Rajiv Gandhi tenure Havala scandal Sant Singh Chatwal case Bhopal gas tragedy 2009 Noida double murder case Arushi Talwar which has movie bhi chuki hai. lack of accountability acute shortage of personnel limited power restricted access why it has been said restricted access because prior approval of central government to conduct inquiry or investigation on employees of the central government inko poochna padega inko poochna padega inko poochna padega ki aap hum aapki investigation kar sakte hain ki nahi in where central government ke uh, secretaries ko you know jo big shots hote hain central government pe and then second obstacle kya hai second obstacle ye bhi hai state government they have to uh, ask state government or maybe state government should give them uh, permission to investigate in their state then only they can investigate or what's the other option supreme court right so here i have mentioned about small facts about the usa and fbi see likewise india has police and public order the state subject right state subject may police and public order hai. usa too they they too have their state subject as police and public order but the moment FBI, FBI is their central, is their central agency. Okay, the moment FBI steps in in certain cases, police personnel, okay, the local police, they stop investigating. But here it doesn't happen because CBI is not independent. Next up, so here comes the suggestions. So I would request you guys to suggest me something that what could be an efficient way how CBI can improve its accountability, how CBI can uh, increase its power or accountability or, or restricted area, something like that. Okay, I have two suggestions for you. First of all, that I think they should delink the CBI from administrative control means separation from its executive. They should not be treated as subordinate. They should be treated as an independent investigator like Comptroller and Auditor General of India, CAG, like Election Commission of India, EC, because they help in maintaining the independence of the institution. So I have these suggestions. What do you think that what are your suggestions? Okay. In that response, could you please tell me about that? What was the LP Singh committee constituted for? It's very relevant, very important here. And I have got three MCQs for you. And in case you have heard my conversation, my lecture, um, at least for a few times, sometimes, then I think you will get these all the questions. It's very dynamic. This is very basic questions. So comment here and we'll see you here. And I'll let you know that your answer is right or wrong because these are the basic questions. We have just, just in a few minutes back, we have learned about these things. Okay. So comment karke aap batayega or we will discuss here. Next up, Mission Vatsalya. What was it? So this is the news. The child at the center. Mission Vatsalya brings together services and all. So this is Mission Vatsalya. Why into news? Okay. So basically, Mission Watsal is one of those um, um, uh, three initiative under one umbrella scheme. The first was Mission Watsal, second was Portion, third was Mission Shakti, or you can see the other way around. Okay, first was Mission Shakti and, and, and this and that. So, but we all know that Mission Watsal will be looking into the child welfare services and child protection services overall country, right? But why is into news? Why they have public, pub, uh, published this news into newspaper? There is a reason for it. Why there is a reason? Because we, they have talked about the child line. And what is child line? We will talk about it, but let's talk about what is actually special in Mission Watsalya. As I said, this is the one of those umbrella schemes which will help all the children to grow, to stay away from distress, to work towards a sustainability and um, to help 
to structure their accountability right so mission watsal will include the schemes for child protection services which is a centrally sponsored scheme right so with the centers intent to provide integrated benefit to children and women is behind a comprehensive revamping of development of women and child schemes okay so basically who are the stakeholders here they wanted to maximize the benefit of the stakeholder which are women and children so mission watsalya which has been operationalized is one of the new triad of scheme along with mission shakti and poshan that aims securing a healthy happy childhood for every child so what are the components components it has been clearly mentioned here i think maybe i will i'll will just um, read and you can download it components are like service delivery structure institutional care and services non institutional based care emergency training okay so these are few um, structure where they they promise that this needs an accountability this this needs a sustainability and through this structure they are going to help the child protection services along with women because they both are stakeholder now what is child line see child line um that's the number 1098 so child line is a 24 hour toll free helpline for children in distress okay and that comes under the ministry of uh, home affairs and mission watsalya who is leading it our union minister smriti irani she is leading it and she is um, we have seen her speaking in front of the uh, uh, media about this now child line has been operating over 25 years okay and gradually they are growing and become one of the largest global network to assist and rescue children in distress trauma stress anxiety depression right it has been fun, uh, function along with public private partnership between the government and civil society organization so civil society organization again along with ngos okay it is a very broader and bigger role and this comes your another segments of mains right so kick start with the process of rescue and rehabilitation of children so there a road map has been already implemented but the scheme um, has not been available i mean the scheme has not been projected and implemented in practical yet however there has been uh, the background work has already been done and the files in the faces and the facts involving in these they have already been set up so it happens that um, when when it was constituted in 1996 the children initially they were not comfortable to speak with the police person of course nobody how will somebody will will talk about their personal life personal thing to a police officer or police i mean any, anybody right so it was tough for children to talk to police officers about their personal being and their distress so what they have done for example in chennai in 2003 so when child line calls were diverted to all women police stations though they were talking to women and uh, but what happened this work was done okay they were talking a lot to women they were talking a lot and they, they, uh, but simultaneously the work of that police personnel got delayed and and they were overburdened with these calls sometimes all the children wanted to spend some times to talking on the phone or they make multiple you know blank calls before they really open up themselves so the old system was hurriedly revived and restored the center will do well to incorporate these responses and to set out a road map for a key aspect to child protection so i hope you understand here that what why this was into news what is watsalya what is child line and what government is now doing how the old system and the traditional convention system they have they are scrapping and based on the behavioral changes how they are implementing these things into mission watsalya this is prelim specific thing i would request you to answer these questions these are a very prelim specific that what is mission shakti what are its objective and mission and what is portion what are its objective and mission and under which ministry does it comes okay so this is it guys i think i i um today's open analysis was very quick and crisp i hope um should you have any questions any doubt any query please feel free to comment here and we will address it immediately okay so thank you so much guys please do not forget to like share and subscribe and press 
हिट द बेल आइकॉन टू गेट द डेली अपडेट मिलते हैं कल के एडिटोरियल एनालिसिस में जब तक आप अपना ख्याल रखिए जय हिंद